In the last video, we saw that the diode introduces a nonlinearity that we need to include in the system of equations during analysis. Solving the nonlinear system directly has become feasible thanks to the advent of computers, but I'm going to introduce a graphical method that you may run into still. To do that, let's use the same simple circuit that we used in the previous video. Let's consider the diode's voltage and current for the reverse and forward regions. What are the resistance values of the diode in these regions? In the reverse region, no current flows. This is true regardless of the voltage across the diode in that region. So let's pick one voltage for argument's sake. Let's use Ohm's law to calculate the resistance of the diode. We see that it is infinite, or what we sometimes call an open. This is one extreme value of resistance the diode can take on, in this case, in the reverse region. Let's consider the other extreme, when there is infinite current. Calculating the resistance of the diode in this case, we find the resistance is zero ohms, what we sometimes call a short. This is the other extreme value of resistance the diode can take on, in this case on the far right of the forward region. In between these two extremes lies an infinite set of finite resistances. So let's think of the diode as a simple resistor. The resistor, R sub D1, can take on any value between 0 and infinity ohms. It is useful to find all of the points on our VI plot that could exist for these values of R sub D1. We can write expressions for the voltage across the diode and the current through the diode. Locating those two points on the VI curve, when the diode is a short, the point is located on the vertical axis. Notice two things here. First, there is no voltage across a short, so the point has to lie on the vertical axis. Second, the point is located at a finite value equivalent to the current through the resistor as if the diode was a short. We find the other extreme point on the horizontal axis. Again, notice two things here. First, there is no current through the open, so the point has to lie on the horizontal axis. Second, the point is located at a finite value equivalent to the voltage across the diode as if it was an open. Now we use the equations for voltage and current shown here to find points on the plot as R sub D1 increases from zero to infinity. These points are not evenly spaced but there are an infinite amount, and ultimately, they form a line connecting the two extreme points. We call this the load line. We don't know which resistance the diode will take on, but we know that it will exist on this line. The point where it crosses the diode VI curve is the solution to the system that we will call the operating point. This is something we can do without a computer, just a ruler and a data sheet. We can apply this method to more complex circuits thanks to Thevenin's theorem. We simply reduce the circuit to its equivalent around the diode. So we have an example of the forward bias case, but what if the diode is reverse biased? Notice that the diode voltage and current are labeled consistently with what we've used previously. Positive voltage on the anode, current flowing from positive to negative. This changes some signs in our analysis, but we use the same approach treat the diode as a short, and find the current through it. The voltage is, of course, zero. This point is one extreme of the load line. Next, we treat the diode as an open. The current is, of course, zero, and we find the voltage across the open. This point is the other extreme of the load line. We once again find these on the VI curve and connect them to make the load line. Notice this line is now in the third quadrant rather than in the first, but that doesn't mean that the intersection with the diode VI plot is any less valid of a solution. The operating point correctly lies within the reverse biased region. While we're here, let's also consider the breakdown region. Here we have a different type of diode called a Zener diode. Also notice I've increased the voltage supply in order to move the operating point into the breakdown region. Its VI curve is a similar shape, but is manufactured to have a much lower breakdown voltage. We see that it's given a value of 5.1 volts. 
Now, even though the component is labeled positive 5.1 volts, and every data sheet I've ever come across lists the value as positive 5.1 volts, I'm going to add that voltage to the plot on the negative side where it belongs. We take the same approach as before, treat the diode as a short, and find the current through it. Once again, the voltage across the short will be zero, and then we treat the diode as an open. The current will always be zero, and we find the voltage across the open. We add these points to the plot and connect them to form the load line. This line extends to the left past the breakdown voltage, but that doesn't mean that the intersection with the diode VI plot is any less valid of a solution. The operating point correctly lies within the reverse breakdown region. Let's consider the pros and cons of this graphical approach. We can do it with a plot and a ruler. No computer is necessary. Thevenin allows analysis of larger, more complicated circuits. And finally, no assumption is necessary. It will work with the same approach for all three regions. On the con side, it is only as accurate as your plot of the diode VI characteristic. More complex analysis is not possible, such as dynamic analysis. And analysis of multi-diode circuits is needlessly complex. Because of these downsides, you will almost exclusively see load lines discussed in an educational setting, as a first step to understanding semiconductor devices. So what works better? Let's revisit our list from the previous video. In the last video, we covered solving the nonlinear system directly. We covered load lines in this video. We're left with using linear assumptions to perform analysis. That's what I will introduce in the next video and what we will use for much of our analysis moving forward. So stay tuned and good luck.